I'm going to um, introduce the, 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 the use of the building because it is, it's so useful as everybody knows who's ever been, we, been with me when I use it. You're going to love it. Wait a minute, I need to see it. Because actually, it's, it's the way life is. This is the penthouse. And this is going to kind of help a little bit. And this is you. And I think when you have an image, like a myth, like a story, that you can relate to, that you can use, like for me, I actually really do retreat into my interior castle. That's a very real place, that, that place of retreating into my castle and the image of closing a drawbridge when I feel that I am in a <clears throat> atmosphere or I'm around too many exterior psychic free radicals. I pull my gate up, but it is a command to my entire field. It's a command to my mental world, my physical, my spiritual, and all of them simultaneously close so that I am in an atmosphere that is fundamentally protected by grace. This is also an image that um, I hope you will find um, as useful, and that's that your life is like a building, and it exists like any building once it's built, once you're born. The ingredients are there. And the only movement from that point on is in the building. You're free to move as much as you want inside the building, but you can't move the building. So once you're born, you can't change where you were born. You can't change the ingredients, but you can change the floor. And we all start out on the first floor. And every level is a different level of consciousness. So let's say that out here there's a mountain range and there's a river. But from the first floor, you can't see that at all. You have no idea that in fact you're living near because here's another building. So if you can imagine that there are people in the building who live in the penthouse and when they're up here they see the mountain range and they see this beautiful river and they have nothing but clean air and they can't hear any noise from the earth. So the world they live in at the same address is a stunningly tranquil, gorgeous reality. Whereas for as far as you're concerned, that reality doesn't exist at the same address. Yours is crowded, loud, dirty, noisy, filled with taxis, filled with grit, where you have to keep your windows open so someone doesn't come in and rob your house. As far as you're concerned, your address could be one of the most difficult and dangerous on the block. You, know, you have no sense that there are any mountains anywhere, much less ocean, much less a river, because you've never seen that, ever. So you don't know what they're talking about. But it's the same address. This is exactly what consciousness is like. We all live on our own floor. And the whole journey is about moving up to the floor, moving up, moving up. And like anything else, as you move up a floor, you see the same from a different view. And the world gets wider and wider. But with every floor, you have to leave behind a lot of your neighbors. The mortgage gets more expensive, and you have to work harder to pay the mortgage to live on that floor. The rent gets higher and more expensive, but it becomes worth it because the view becomes so spectacular. 
and and you get the sense that I've got I just want to go up and it's just it's more tranquil on the inside. You, you begin to see the proportions change, that the, the glitz of the world ceases to fill you as the view and the quiet and the tranquility that you establish at the higher views begins to take over. And you prefer this view from the traffic and the noise out here that used to be your distraction. Here it was, what can I go out and get, experience, taste, indulge? Because on this floor, it was all about indulging your appetites. Because you were so near the ground that you could smell and taste, hear, touch. You wanted every one of your appetites indulged. And here, it was a whole different experience of wanting to become very particular about what appetite. The withdrawal from appetites. As you become more and more clean of what controls you. And you start making more and more choices as to what you want to have authority over you. What you want to have influence over you you start becoming very selective about I, I, I can't have that, I can't have that in me. I don't want that in me. I am separating from this. I need to examine this in me. I can't, I can't have that issue call my spirit anymore. I've got to work on that. I have to unplug from this. That's when you are in the middle altitudes. That's when we're in here. Now, the significance of doing this work is so gargantuan because as I had brought up earlier, and I'm going to re probably refer to this again and again and again, that in entering nuclear conscious, conscious, <coughs> consciousness, we opened ourselves. We became um, quantumly intimate with each other. The internet and internet. We, we, it's like we operate like the internet psychically now. We send each other. We hit send every time we have a thought about each other. That's exactly how we work. We are that interconnected. And um, the, con the kind of collective, because we have woven ourselves together technically, which has never happened before, because we plug ourselves in to the global brain technically. The way that we are interconnected is something that the mystics have always taught. Jesus taught that. Francis, Buddha, we're all one. They all taught that. Now we have technically caught up with it. Now our technology is that way, as if it's something new. But what we have yet to go anywhere near, what we've yet to go anywhere near at all, is what it means to be psychically intimate with each other. What it means in terms of our immune system, what it means in terms of our health, what it means at that level. <clears throat> 